a moment of silence. Keep all our troops in our prayers. Pledge to the flag, Dennis. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4-10 has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood. Freeholder Barrett Blonte. Here. Freeholder Kenny. Here. Freeholder Polos. Here. Freeholder Tamara. Here. Freeholder Valenti. Here. Freeholder Director Rios. Here. We have some recognitions. Yes. Um, this evening we're recognizing the 250th anniversary of the New Brunswick Fire Department along with the honorees of the Woodbridge Metro Chamber of Commerce Chairman's Award Dinner, recognizing the observance of Pulaski Day in Middlesex County and the honorees associated with Pulaski Day, recognizing October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in Middlesex County is the, the final recognition. Is there a motion to Motion. Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, second by Freeholder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Belante? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director <clears throat> Rios? Yes. We have a public hearing this evening on the county's five year plan and the annual housing plan. This public hearing was authorized at a meeting of the Board of Chosen Freeholders held September 18, 2014. A notice of this public hearing appeared in the Home News Tribune on September 25, 2014. At this time, I declare the public hearing open for any comments on the county's five-year and annual housing plan for 2015. Anyone from the audience that would like to make comments on that? I move to close the public portion. Second. I move to close by Freeholder Tamaro, seconded by Freeholder Valente. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Correspondence? Each freeholder has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the clerk's office since our last meeting. This correspondence will be kept on file in the office of the clerk of the board for reference. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, seconded by Freeholder Tamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to our meeting tonight. And I'm pleased to share with you tonight the State of the County Address for 2014. Middlesex County has experienced great progress in 2014 in many different areas, from expanding our programming for those most in need to keeping our expenses in check so that our taxpayers get the quality programs they deserve at costs that they can afford. This freeholder board with our administration and staff, staff have held fast to our commitment to serve our residents. We have done this by building on our sol solid financial foundation by deploying new technologies throughout our business processes to streamline government and by focusing on our residents and their needs so that we remain responsive. Now, I can continue to discuss progress in the abstract, but I believe our projects, our services, and our business decisions deserve to be recognized with con concrete examples. As Benjamin Franklin once said, and I quote, well done is better than well said. Our commitment to end homelessness in Middlesex County, including homelessness among our veterans, advanced this year as the board helped break ground on Kilmer Homes. The county allocated $2.1 million from its Housing First Capital Fund toward the construction of 30 units in the 120 unit complex being constructed in Edison. The project is just one way this board, especially Freeholder Blanquita Valenti, a staunch advocate for ending homelessness is looking to improve the lives of those affected by poverty. It is here that we, our community partners, are creating a safe and productive community for homeless veterans, families who may be in danger of becoming homeless, and all those needing a place of their own. I'm also proud to announce that our initiatives to support our veterans have been recognized on a federal level. Our Veterans Service Program was the sole recipient of the 2014 Meritorious Service Award from the National Coalition for Homeless Veterans. The program brings together federal, state, 
local, and nonprofit groups to provide different forms of aid to our veterans, including housing assistance. When we consider these brave men and women, we must remember that they have served and sometimes died to protect all of us. The least we can do to repay their sacrifices is to make sure that life in the U.S. remains worth fighting for and protect them in return. About 18 months ago, under my direction and with the support of this freeholder board and the County Human Services staff and community partners, we expanded the program to form the Veterans Housing Assistance Program. So far, this program, the only one of its kind in the state, has helped over 65 veterans and their families with housing assistance, employment, and follow-up case management. Assist assistance ranges from helping veterans put down security deposits, pay rental arrears, or advance rental payments when needed. It is my hope that these programs will continue to grow and that our educational outreach, along with our residents' support, will create a safe environment for America's heroes and truly make our county a better place to be. In addition to creating housing for the neediest among us, the county in collaboration with the Middlesex County Improvement Authority, Edison Township, and the JFK Health Net System has furthered its plans to transform the historic Roosevelt Care Center into independent, affordable apartments for our senior citizens. The project, one that I have been deeply involved with and have been working with our partners since taking my seat on this freeholder board, answers the growing and changing health care and housing needs of our senior residents. Our two state-of-the-art facilities, one in Edison, the second in Oldbridge, are meeting the need for skilled care. The his historic building will help us answer the need for affordable housing for our seniors, including our veterans, who may not need the level of care offered at a long-term care facility. We anticipate the Roosevelt campus in Edison will soon house other health care amenities, such as doctor's office, doctor's offices and a dialysis center to better serve our residents. We expect to share more news with you as the project moves forward. As we consider the welfare of the entire county and as the county continues to face cutbacks from the state in critical areas such as health care and education, my freeholder colleagues and I turned our attention to ways we could expand health care initiatives, especially for women. So under the guidance of Freeholder Deputy Director Carol barrett Belante, a question has been placed on the November ballot asking Middlesex County voters to authorize, but not bind, the governing body of the County of Middlesex to increase funding to be used exclusively for women's health programs. The programs are designed specifically to enhance the early detection and screening for diseases uniquely affecting women. Such programs include mammograms, cancer screenings, pap tests, cervical exams, and similar disease screening and detection programs. No new tax dollars would be used to pay for these programs. Instead, the county would allocate existing funds if the voters pass this res referendum. My freeholder colleagues and I, recognizing the importance of the arts in our lives, placed a second question on the Middlesex County ballot to establish the Middlesex County Cultural and Arts Trust Fund. The fund would be used exclusively for the development, restoration, improvement to, and maintenance of cultural and arts facilities, theaters, and other arts venues within Middlesex County, and to encourage and support arts education for county residents through support of quality arts education programs, including those sponsored and conducted through qualified nonprofit arts organizations. <clears throat> the Middlesex County Cultural and Arts Trust Fund would also provide general support to projects and programs whose purpose is to recognize and preserve the history and heritage of Middlesex County, including recognizing and honoring our veterans. My freeholder colleagues and I believe that now is the time to step up and fill the gaps the state has created, especially in health and education funding. If voters agree with us, the county will assess its current programming and take the appropriate steps to fund these critical women's health programs and arts ed education and services projects. 
Speaking of voting, the county has embraced a get out the vote initiative to make it easier for our citizens to participate in the democratic process. <coughs> Every town has polling places where we can vote. But there are many citizens who, due to disabilities, work, school, or family commitments, or for other reasons, cannot get out to the polling place on election day. Our vote by mail program, which many of you have already taken advantage of, seeks to ease voting and enable citizens to still make a difference at election time, even if they can't get to the polling places. Improving access to voting and to all our services has been a constant goal of this freeholder board. And in the 21st century, access to information is most easily delivered via the internet. So it is my pleasure to announce that Middlesex County's state-of-the-art and interactive website will debut later this month. Through the site, the Board of Chosen Freeholders will be able to offer individuals and businesses the ability to engage and interact with county government more efficiently. Users will be able to complete online payment and registration for programs, fill out grant and program applications, reserve picnic <coughs> rows, contact elected officials, and view freeholder meetings. One component of the new site is the Middlesex County Economic Development Business Portal, which provides business investors with financing, information, and incentives, and other opportunities using interactive maps. Businesses will be able to analyze the county's assets through relevant demographic, economic, and quality of life information that will serve to attract or retain investments. Freeholder Ken Armwood has helped to usher in this new technology to help boost economic development, increase job opportunities, and help our business community to continue to thrive. Recognizing that strong businesses need a skilled and educated workforce, the county has focused on continuing our tradition of offering quality education. 2014 marks the 100th anniversary of the Middlesex County Vocational Technical School District. The district has grown and changed with the times, offering our students the education they need to thrive in today's business climate. As a result of our efforts and the efforts of the board, administration, and staff of the district, three of our schools over the last three years have been awarded National Blue Ribbon designation. In fact, we received word this past Tuesday that the County's Academy for Allied Health and Biomedical Sciences in Woodbridge joined the Academy for Mathematics and Engineering Technology in Edison and the Perth Amboy campus in earning this distinction. I'm also proud to announce that Middlesex County College continues to extend, expand its programs in a time when most other education institutions institutions are pulling back. Deputy Director Barrett Belante, Freeholder Charlie Kenny, and a host of dignitaries broke ground on the Center for Student Services, which will provide a revolutionary process for enrolling students who will be able to conduct their enrollment process at one counter instead of making multiple stops. The college also will be building an academic science building that will house additional instructional and labs space for science programs, especially chemistry and biology, to enable the college to expand its health-related and biotech programs. My freeholder colleagues and I allocated $3.4 million in capital funds for the science building project and $6 million for the Student Services Center, underscoring our commitment to the education of all our residents. The programs and services I've mentioned could not be a reality without master planning and a methodical approach to our budget process. Under the direction of Freeholder Charles Kenny, and with the support of our administration and finance department, Middlesex County has accomplished the county's goal of keeping our financial house in order over the past six years. This has been attained even in the face of federal and state cuts to programming. In short, we are, doing more, we are doing more with less. I thank my colleagues here on the board and the entire county staff for ensuring our citizens will continue to receive quality services. 
The 2014 budget is $783,968 less than the statutory 2% cap. This was made possible by the conti continued strategy of restructuring county government and by harnessing new technology to replace labor intensive and manual processes. New technology has been in introduced in the surrogates and purchasing offices, leading to more efficient service and more access to our programs. In 2014, Middlesex County, with the guidance of Freeholder Kenny, paved the way in advancing new fiscal policies which are in line with our continued long-term fiscal strategies. We were the first county in New Jersey to officially adopt by freeholder resolution a fund balance policy and a debt policy. Freeholder Kenny, you have been on this board for less than a year and you have really hit the ground running. Thank you. This strong debt service strategy is reflected in a decrease in debt service of 11% over last year and our continued work to increase our surplus funds by $6.5 million or 31% since 2013. We have done this in order to ensure that we have the proper reserve to absorb, absorb any emergent situation such as Superstorm Sandy in 2012. Middlesex County is the only county in the state that has not used surplus funds in 2014 to close any budget gaps. As a result of our financial acumen, Standard & Poor's had two opportunities to rate our, our condition and continues to award us a AAA bond rating, the highest rating obtainable. In its summary of findings, Standard & Poor's stated, and I quote, Middlesex County's management is strong in our view, supported by good financial management policies and practices. The county has adequate budgetary flexibility with projections of improvement to levels we consider strong within the next two to four years. The stable outlook reflects our view that Middlesex County is on a positive fiscal traje trajectory and is in a strong position to build on reserves through positive operations." End of quote. Neither the state nor federal governments hold AAA bond ratings. Maybe they can learn from us. <laughs> a AAA rating means that we can invest in our roads, buildings, and bridges to ensure a strong, safe infrastructure and that we can build and maintain state-of-the-art educational facilities <coughs> and communications networks at lower cost to our taxpayers. These investments are made through our capital budget, which in 2014 includes $27 million for infrastructure improvements, $9 million to enhance emergency response capabilities, and $8.4 million for improvements to the infrastructure and educational facilities at the county college and vocational schools. Another $4.8 million has been allocated for community services projects, including including efforts to end homelessness. Middlesex County, unlike the state and many other government entities, has worked hard to lower our operating expenses so that we do not increase the burden on our taxpayers. One example is our success as keeping our health care costs in check. Middlesex County is self-insured, meaning it is not enrolled in the state's health care plan for its employees. By being self-insured, the county has been able to keep annual increases down to between 3% and 5%. The state health care costs are rising by double digits every year. To further reduce costs, Middlesex County has initiated a wellness program for all our employees. The wellness program, overseen by a wellness coach, includes blood pressure and other screenings, a lunchtime walking group, help with weight loss and smoking cessation, and building healthy habits among our employees. By being proactive, we are helping our employees prevent chronic medical issues such as heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes before they begin, increasing their productivity and lowering our health care costs. By lowering costs in certain areas, my freeholder colleagues and I are able to allocate funds to programs that improve the quality of life 
of all our residents, especially in the area of safety. During Superstorm Sandy and other water-related situations, the county recognized a need for resources to specifically address these problems. At the recommendation of freeholder Jim Polos, the county is providing inflatable boats to three designated municipalities to facilitate evacuations during any flood or water-related emergency. The boats will be fully equipped with trained staff and supplies. The county will also form a water rescue and recovery team that would consist of fully trained staff and equipment to conduct water rescues, searches, and evacuations. This team will work in concert with the high water rescue vehicles the county anticipates receiving later this calendar year. On June 20th, Freeholder Polos facilitated the Heroin and Opiates, a Matter of Public Safety and Health brainstorming session. This event, attended by over 100 individuals from law enforcement, the courts, clergy, treatment and counseling groups, and various civic and professional organizations, was called to identify and formulate strategies to address this ever-growing epidemic. The attendees identified six focus areas to further design plans and programs specifically geared to reduce and treat opiate abuse. Subsequent meetings for each of these groups are ongoing and recommendations concerning these target areas are forthcoming. The popular traffic safety is elementary, don't clown around video, created in 2012 for kindergarten to third graders, won the Children and Youth Program Award and best instructional and training video in the 2013 Jam Video Award Festival. It has been presented to 23 schools and over 6,000 enthusiastic children in Middlesex County and will continue to offer the program to additional schools in the fall and spring. Safety, quality education, and state-of-the-art recreation, recreational facilities are the, are the hallmarks of a great community. Middlesex County prides itself on these three areas for good reason. In addition to our award-winning schools and comprehensive human service and safety programs, the county offers a multitude of passive and acu active recreational facilities. This year, we completed more than $7 million in Superstorm Sandy repairs at three of our parks. Old Bridge Waterfront Park, Raritan Bay Waterfront Park, and Alvin Williams Park. In addition, we pay tribute to one of our most dedicated public servants and my good friend with the dedication of the James T. Phillips Boardwalk at Old Bridge Waterfront Park. It was Jim, in his time as Middlesex County Freeholder and Old Bridge Mayor, who championed the establishment and growth of Old Bridge Waterfront Park. The boardwalk, which lies along the Raritan Bay, offers some of the most beautiful views in the county. It is next to a brand new pirate-themed playground that was also installed at the park. Freeholder Charles Tamaro has been a very vocal and strong advocate for the Middlesex Greenway, a 3.5-mile hiking and biking path that runs through Edison, Metuchen, and Woodbridge. I'm happy to announce that in 2014, the county acquired an additional piece of land from Conrail that will allow us to connect the eastern end of the Greenway to East William Street Park in the Ford section of Woodbridge Township. Conceptual design will begin next year. Under Freeholder Tamaro's supervision, the county also purchased 5.87 acres of property across from the county Perth Amboy Vocational Technical High School and is, and is negotiating the purchase of an additional 2.9 acres at the site for a brand new <coughs> active recreation park. When complete, the park will include a waterfront walkway, three multi-purpose fields and a playground, increasing the quality of life for the residents of Perth Amboy and all of Middlesex County. To improve our passive recreation and conservation areas, <coughs> the county partnered with the nonprofit Green Trust Alliance, a regional conservation organization. 
applied and was granted final approval for more than $3.8 million to fund wetland, wetland restoration projects on four county properties. One, the Pin Oak Forest in Woodbridge Township. Two, the Thompson Park Conservation Area in Monroe Township. Three, the Jamesburg Park Conservation Area in the borough of Helmetta. And four, Deep Run Preserve in Old Bridge Township. The restoration will be implement, implemented by Green Trust Alliance with oversight from the county. The project funding covers design and permitting, construction, planting and monitoring, as well as the cost of county personnel time for review and administration. This funding will allow us to further restore and enhance wetlands and open spaces, provide improved habitat for wildlife, and protect and improve water quality, all at no cost to the county. This furthers our commitment to not only preserve open space throughout the county, but to be effective stewards of this important, important investment. We will continue to pursue creative avenues to acquire funding to support our ongoing commitment to county parks and open space. Middlesex County's agricultural history is safeguarded by the extremely successful farmland preservation program. In 2014, a 37.7 acre farm became the 52nd farm in Middlesex County preserved forever since it entered the county's preservation program. With the addition of this farm, more than 5,400 acres of farmland have, pre have been preserved throughout the county. That number includes preservation easements purchased through the county farmland preser preservation program funds as well as purchases made directly by the state, the municipalities, nonprofit organizations, and land donated to the county. We have made great strides in protecting our environment, preserving our precious lands, and offering great opportunities to spend quality time at state-of-the-art facilities. We have kept our expenses in check, build and improve our infrastructure, and enhance our residents' safety. And under the leadership of freeholder Blanquita Valenti, I'm, happy, I'm very happy to say that we have been able to further our mission to care for all the residents of Middlesex County. In addition to our efforts to end homelessness, homelessness and meet our seniors' health care needs, we offer comprehensive health, mental health care at the George Otlowski Senior Mental Health Center. In 2014, staff increased services provided to residents by 15% and increased the size of its group program by 20%. The center now offers 16 groups, 16 different groups for children, adults, and families in English and in Spanish. Even with the increase in service, the center's operating budget decreased by 20% and its revenues have increased 15%. Speaking to the operational efficiencies, achieved throughout the year. As I said at the opening, Middlesex County has made great progress this past year. In no way could this have happened without the dedication and diligence of our administration and staff. And for that, my fellow freeholders and I are very grateful. Middlesex County is a business in the strictest sense of the word because we are in the business of serving the more than 815,000 people who call this county home. It is our responsibility to ensure that their, their needs are met and that they have the best opportunities for quality education and recreation. We must do all of this at cost our citizens can afford. I believe our ability to carry out our duties is strong and that in 2014, Middlesex County continues to be the greatest county in the land. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I'd like to open the meeting up to the public on any discussion on resolutions listed on the agenda. I move to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close the public portion by Field of Tamaro, seconded by Field of Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? 
Okay, Mr. Kelso. Uh, yes, for the director, a motion would then be in order to adopt the consent agenda consisting of resolution numbers 14-1739 through 14-1812. There a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Motion by Fielder Valente, seconded by Fielder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Valente? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polo? Yes. Freeholder Tamara? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. Okay, at this time I'd like to open the meeting to the public on any discussion. Anyone from the public? Good evening, uh, Charles Craddeville from New Brunswick. Uh, it was a very good speech. There's a lot of exciting stuff in there. Good job. Um, I'm particularly excited about the, the new website uh, launching, and I have a couple suggestions. I think it'd be really great if um, there was a list of the meeting schedules, not just for this body, but for some of the other uh, boards and commissions that, that meet uh, across the county, like uh, you know, MCIA, MCUA, um, you know, planning board, those types of things. Um, and uh, yeah, it sounds sounds like a good thing. Um, I I do want to uh, follow up on what I brought up a month ago. I, I asked for uh, what I thought were some very basic questions uh, about the county's fleet of vehicles and procedures for who gets a take-home vehicle, and also procedures um, for uh, checking people's driving history. And and uh, Mr. Freeholder, director, you told me that um, uh, you believe that you know prior to their hiring that. Uh, you said you, quote, would assume that uh, we do a check of somebody's driving history um, if they're going to be driving on the job. Uh, is, is, is that true, or uh, do we check people's driving history uh, before they're given driving privileges? Currently, through all our PBAs, part of background checks, um, their, their driving records, motor vehicle summonses, et cetera, are um, check through that process. Civil service requests uh, basically through their job specs. One of the line items uh, in requirements is if the job calls for a valid New Jersey driver's license, that's the extent of that call, that it be a valid New Jersey driver's license. We do have policy, written policy for those that do have vehicles, uh, whether or not they take them home, they're strictly for county use, no uh, passengers in the vehicle um, uh, other than work related. Um, if there is a motor vehicle accident to be reported, there may be disciplinary procedures that we do have in place uh, as well as may lead up to termination. Uh, in the event that there's a, a motor vehicle accident um, uh, that involved injuries or where the vehicle was not to uh, able to be driven away, had to be towed for a seat from the scene, then a uh, uh, an alcohol or a uh, drug and alcohol test would have to be taken simultaneously. You know, to be taken to the hospital, I guess, to be checked. Uh, if there's any, um, if the vehicle's not driving or there were injuries from from the accident, so we have a, a policy in place, and as occurrences do happen, we are always critiquing those issues and improving upon our policies. Thank you for that. So just to be clear, the police officers get their driving history checked and the rest of the employees get, uh, if, if, if it's part of the job, they it's just checked whether or not their license is valid. Well, annu annually they have to produce a valid driver's license annually, okay. to the department that um, they work for um, based on the, their issuance of, of whether it's a pool vehicle that they drive or a vehicle that they take home. Okay, thank you, and uh, I look forward to the response to my public records request. Um, I, I do uh, want to ask my next question before uh, Freeholder Barrett Belante through the chair um, uh, about the MCUA. There was uh, allegations, criminal charges filed against a longtime employee of that agency who was in charge of the money. Um, that that she, the allegations are that she was stealing and had stolen uh, something on the order of fifty-seven thousand dollars in three years. Um, could, could you please ask your colleague? Um, what, what the status is of that uh, agency and um, whether we think there's been more stealing. Was anyone else stealing or was there uh, stealing that was maybe going on for more than just that three years? At this time, I would defer the, uh, the, that question to our county council, who I think would be able to answer that question. The, the matter is obviously under criminal investigation. Uh, I know when, in particular with the one individual, there have been charges that have been filed at the prosecutor's office in cooperation with the, uh, the leadership and the staff at MCUA are looking at all 
uh, a potential uh, other allegations that may be there, but it's, it is a continuing criminal investigation. Okay, and, and if I could just ask uh, if the uh, freeholder, Barrett Blonte, could, could speak a little bit to the oversight of that agency that the freeholders provide. For, for example, do you attend the board meetings of, or do you review the minutes of the board meetings? How, what, what level is the oversight that this board has over that board? I don't board? go to the meetings, but I, I do read the minutes and I get the minutes and I do read them. Okay, and... Um, Time. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Move to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by Fiola Tamaro, seconded by Fiola Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion to adjourn by Fiola Valente, seconded by Fiola Tamaro. All in favor? Let's go. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. Meeting adjourned.